first form we're going to draw is a cube, so I am starting with just one square. Then I'm going to draw another square that overlaps the first square, and it kind of makes a little square in the middle, right there. Then I'm going to connect all the corners to both squares. Next, I choose one square. There's two of them, so I choose one, and I'm choosing the first one. And I'm going to erase everything inside of that square. Next, I'm going to erase the lines that go side to side and straight up and down, but I'm going to leave that diagonal line. The next form we're going to draw is a pyramid, and this is from the bottom up. So we're looking at the bottom. I'm drawing a slanted rectangle, kind of like a parallelogram, and then I draw a dot. Then all I do is I connect three of those top corners to that dot, and we have a pyramid as if we're looking from the bottom. Next is a cylinder. I start with an oval. I draw two lines that go straight down, another oval, and then I'm going to erase one of those lines that's on the inside of the cylinder so that I can only see one end of it. Next, I'm going to draw these things. I kind of, I kind of call them tubes and they just give our drawing some depth. Just like when I drew the cylinder, I started with an oval, then I drew two lines that go away from it to create that tube and you can make your tubes connect to other forms. You can make them go off the page. Just make sure you erase those lines that are inside the tube. You can make as many as you'd like. Now we're going to start to paint. I am using yellow and orange. Those are the two colors I chose because one is a primary, yellow is a primary color, and orange is a secondary color. And then I'm going to need a third color which would be called the analogous color. An analogous color is the color that's in between a primary color and a secondary color. So to create that third color all I'm going to do is mix the yellow and the orange together to create a yellow-orange. So first I start with just the yellow and I'm going to paint one side of each of my forms. Just one side because I want to leave room for those other two colors. I'm painting very carefully but if I do make a mistake we are going to paint the background with black. You could do this with other materials like crayons or colored pencils. You would just have to color in lightly for that third color to be able to mix. So you can color over another color and mix colored pencils and crayons. It's just a little more difficult than paint. Before I switch to my next color, I make sure I wash my brush and dry it off. Now I'm going in with the orange and I'm going to paint just one side of all those forms. I'm not painting any of my tubes yet, just my forms.
Now I'm going to start to mix that yellow orange. So I always start with the lightest color first, which would be the yellow in this case, and I'm going to move some over to another spot in my palette so that I still have some clean yellow. Then I wash my brush, and I'm going to grab some orange, but not nearly as much. I mix it together until it is the color that I like, and then I can start to paint those last few spaces on my forms. If you'd like to choose a different set of colors, just make sure that you choose a primary color, so either red, yellow, or blue, and then a secondary color that's next to that primary color. So if you chose yellow, you could choose orange or green to go with it. If you chose red, you could choose purple or orange. And if you chose blue, you could choose green or purple. Now I'm coloring in those tubes. I make sure that I use a different color. So this tube is touching a yellow space and a yellow orange space. So the only other option I have is orange. If your tube is only touching one form and goes off the page, you could choose any of the other two colors. You just don't want the same color touching itself. You want to have different colors. Be very careful when you get to the edge of your paper. Now I'm going to start to paint the back of my paper and make sure that you have something underneath your paper like a piece of newspaper or scrap paper because we are going to be painting all the way to the edge of our paper. So all I'm using is just black paint and I'm covering up that whole background. Make sure you go all the way to the edge and go very carefully around the edges of your forms. because what we want is for our background to seem like it's sinking way far back and that our forms are floating in the middle of the air. You can turn your paper if it makes it easier. Again, you could use colored pencil or crayon, but for this part, you just want to make sure that that black is as black as you can get it. You want it to be super dark. Now that everything's painted, I'm just going to take a Sharpie and outline all those little pencil lines that are still there 
I'm even going to outline the spaces that touch the background because I want to make sure that that edge is super sharp. Now with the Sharpie is also a great time to add some curved lines to your tubes to really make them look 3D. Depending on the way that you curve your lines and how spaced out they are, you could really make a cool illusion here. And there's the finished painting.